Welcome into my newest build, the Phantasmal Blades Rantang Infiltrator. This build uses Pierce Phantasmal Blades for burst damage with the Shadow Baranov and Storm Spread as fillers, as well as Horn of Gandar and Blade Trap for debuffs, which the Rantang set actually supports in a way so that Blade Trap works against bosses. I didn't really expect too much out of the build and initially I thought it's gonna be like another meme build, however, it actually proved to be better than expected. Of course, it is able to clear everything in the main campaign easily, including the Mad Queen, and also some easier super bosses like Lokar. Please don't spank me too hard, Daddy. As well as Crucible 150 to 170, even with extra spawn, in under 7 minutes. And also SR 50 to 51 while pulling all the bosses, as well as SR 65 to 66 while pulling the bosses one by one. I really like the place of this build, it's very different to like your standard infiltrator. However, if you don't like pressing lots of buttons, then this build is probably not for you because it's kind of a piano build, yet again. But yeah, overall, I hope you're gonna enjoy this build, and let's head right into the skill allocation. Alright, so first of all, let's check out the skill allocation for this guy. So we are obviously a Knockblade and an Inquisitor, and we are using the Horn of Gander as well as the Blade Trump because of the Ram Tank set. Now, we have maxed out Phantasmal Blades, 12 out of 12 Heartseeker for the last seal mostly, and also like the Flat Vitality which gets converted to Pierce, and also 16 out of 12 Nether Edge for the Cold Damage, Chaos Damage that also gets like converted towards Pierce, Cold basically almost like 90% or like almost 100% and Chaos about 50% to Pierce. Also the crit damage is very nice and we do have the ability to crit way more or like for way higher on this build than compared to others due to Blade Trap, reducing like enemy defensive ability by minus 35%. So yeah, because of that I prefer to put more points in Nether Edge than into Heartseeker. Also I have a one pointer into Blade Spirits just because like Blade Spirits are pretty nice to like have on top of everything else, right? And they're like pretty nice to like proc devotions and yeah, I mean they're like that's like you cast the ones at the start of your game, your session and that's it, right? They are just there and they also deal some pierce damage and the cold damage of them is actually also like mostly converted towards pierce due to like all the global conversion we have on this world. Chromatic burst 15 out of 12 for 60% total speed as well as like pretty nice away and health restored. 12 out of 12 Shadow Dance for dodge and defensive ability, uh, 1 point to Elemental Awakening for the like elemental resistances mostly. Soft cap into Weight of Shadow for minus away and total speed, and a soft cap into Nod's Shell for resistance reduction. If you have like more points to spare into this, feel free to push this higher than 10 out of 10. It's also very good to like put more points into your resistance shred abilities because that's a very nice way to like scale damage. A 1 pointer into Phantasmal Armor for the flat armor as well as Pierce and CC resistances, and also some energy, Leech. 11 out of 12 in Antimate of Murder, this is a cunning scaling build, so like pure damage scales of cunning, so like 24% cunning at 11 out of 12 is like very very good value, also 14% damage to humans and like some bleed damage isn't bad either. Blade Trap, soft cap here, well only the soft cap because up to the soft cap you get like insane DA shred and like decent pierce damage, after that it's not that great anymore, so we really just keep this at a soft cap. Blade Trap, even if it does work on bosses with the Ram Punk set, it's still like not a big like damage dealing ability, it's still primarily like a debuff ability, so you just wanna like get it as high as you want it for the debuff. And kind of the same thing applies to the Warring Blades, right, just a one pointer here to get some like higher radius and also like some last steal and some percent pierce damage onto the blade trap and also to have like the 50% chance to pass through enemies that's actually pretty nice as well that we have like a 50-50 chance to like affect more than one enemy apart from just like also like having a AOE anyways so yeah like it's uh it will like basically blade trap the entire screen already just with like 12 out of 12 here and like one point here so like there's no need to like put more than these points here. Moving over to the Inquisitor, we are actually using a gun, so we can soft cap range expertise for that attack speed, pierce damage, and percent pierce damage, which will also like apply to like all the weapon damage based abilities that we have, like Phantasma Blades. A one pointer into Storm Spread, we are actually using this as basically our second main damage ability besides Phantasma Blades, because of the gun that we have converting all the lightning damage on this to pierce, and the projectiles can shotgun. I haven't actually tried like putting this up to 7 points, I can imagine 7 out of 10 for like 4 projectiles and it's like a higher chance to use this being a pretty nice way to like scale up your damage as well. Word of Renewal, 1 pointer here, maxed out Vigor and soft cap still resolved. Well, why only 1 pointer in Word of Renewal? I mean usually you kind of want to like soft cap or like hard cap this as well, but we already have like 15 out of 12 points in Phonetic Burst for healing. And also defensive ability is looking very good even with this like as a one pointer so there's actually no like need to put more than 
a one pointer here on this specific build. However, if you feel like on your setup you need more pawns here, feel free to put more pawns here. Bigger max out because of the CC resistances as well as the big HP. Like the build is kind of low in HP as you can see. Like without, with Vigor, we're like barely scratching 13k, not not quite though. This is kind of needed for the HP. C resolve, Aetheris, and Chaos Rest for free as well as like damage to Chthonis and Eldritch. Very good. Also, the flat physical damage actually gets converted to pierce via the armor piercing percent of my weapon. Next up, we have Word of Pain. This is another debuff ability, like 1 point here, 1 point here, actually 14 or 12. I mean, soft cap is kind of the sweet spot when it comes to like value, but as I said earlier, like you can put more points into like resistance reduction abilities if you feel like doing that. And also, basically, almost all of the elemental damage on those like fire, cold, lightning, and the elemental damage here is converted to pierce. However, we're not really like focusing too much on like the skills here. So, yeah, even though this is almost pure pierce wood of pain, we're just the like one one and fourteen out of twelve in this one. Horn of Gander. This is your actually AOE damage as well as like debuff. So, twenty two out of twelve gives you actually thirty percent damage reduction for five seconds, and this has a two point three second cooldown. So we actually have one hundred percent uptime on this all the time. I was like confuses trash and does like some main hand damage as well as some piercing damage. This is actually insane on this build, and this is like one of the reasons why this build is actually surprisingly tanky. Like this build is like it looks like a meme build, but it actually has okay damage because of like the crit damage on Phantasma Blades and like the DA shred on Blade Trap. And also it's very tanky due to Horn of Gander and Seal and Order of Conviction. And yeah, Horn of Gander is a big part of that with the 30% damage reduction to all damage types now. This has been buffed, I think, on the latest patch, actually 1.1.8. Before it was like elemental and physical damage reduction, now it's actually to all damage. So this is like a huge, huge like buff for a build like this. Inquisitor of Seal up to 17 out of 12. I mean, on any Inquisitor you want to use this, Unless you're like a heavy kiting build that has like damage or time abilities, this is not such a build. This is a flat damage pierce build, so you kind of have to like stand your ground and like keep on attacking. Flat absorb is insane, so like just max this out of it. A one pointer into arcane empowerment, which gives you flat pierce as well as flat elemental as well as like percent all damage and crit damage. I kind of would like to increase this because you convert most of the elemental damage to pierce. Uh, flat pierce is obviously great. And like crit damage also is very very good for this because we do have like a very very high chance to crit on this build. Deadly aim 9 out of 12. You can also like put this up to 12 out of 12. I just simply don't have the points. Same thing as for like Arcane Empowerment, right? These are like very good as well. And you can like put more points here. Um, if you somehow manage to, or like you can maybe like try to like lowering the points of range of expertise or something like that. I haven't like tried out all these possibilities yet and like properly tested them. But from just what I had in my feeling I just put this at one pointer for now because I feel like the points, at least in hardcore, are like better put into like another place. However, this is really really great and has a chance on activating wherever you crit and gives you like more crit damage and more offensive ability. So like once you activate this, you will just like keep on critting, especially with bait trap. That's like really really good. Last but not least, our exclusive skill, Aura of Conviction, for physical resistance, pierce damage, and percent pierce damage. And yeah, that's like really good right also 173 away i mean that's basically all you want to like round out the build properly let's take a look at devotions for devotions um you obviously need to use assassin's mark right for the pierce resistance shred then you need to get flat resistance reduction because you don't get that from masteries so in this case i use tip the scales then for pierce basically the best devotion for pierce is shifting sands so we got this one azraka then you also have Unknown Soldier, really really good for Pierce as well. The Shadows actually heal you as well, pretty nice. To additionally support my healing, I use Riot's Blessing actually, instead of Ghoul. I'm not using Ghoul on this build because I feel like your weapon damage is actually not like super consistent. I mean, you have weapon damage on Horn of Gander, you have weapon damage on Phantasma Blades, and you have weapon damage on your default attacks. But like, you're not really like spamming one of them like permanently, like you would do like either on a casting speed based caster or like a like attack speed based melee or range build, right? So Ghoul is maybe like like super consistent and i actually think that like dryad is a really really good devotion now like it got buffed again last patch as well it only has two seconds skill recharge which like fits perfectly on your like horn of gander it basically has like a 100 percent chance to procs so, like whenever you use your horn of gander you're gonna heal and also get more armor so that's like pretty nice i like it a lot also the yellow completion of dryad like fits your pierce damage devotions like way better this like for example allows me to like take points in the obelisk of men here on top like you actually even five points also like, getting this like bonus stun freeze and armor absorption and like watcher on top right for da and armor really good as well and then we have some fillers like lizard eel panther i mean it is it is actually like very nice on night blades right because of the dodge panther is like good on all builds because of oa lizard is like okay here for movement speed and hp 
And then we also have Throne and Wolverine for like DA and like CC resistances on Throne. And yeah, also due to that devotion setup, we can actually like, for example, use a Space Gorge plating in our pants here instead of the Ancient Armor plate or like the Scaled Height and still have 99% armor absorption with also actually 2.6k armor. And whenever you proc the Dryad, right, you have even more 2.7k armor as you can see. And let's talk about the gear real quick. Obviously, a uh, ram tank set is like a must, right? Four piece ram tank here. Then we have the blood roar for the um, lightning to pierce conversion to storm spread. Also, like plus one to all the skills. And on top of that, this is a craft bow. And I got armor percent, like percent armor on this one. You either want percent armor or like maybe physique or actually stun rest. As you can see, this is not quite capped out yet. So you could like try to craft this for stun rest as well. Then we have the offhand Jorinthros head. This is actually kind of easy to get. Like it's only like one boss from the three bosses from the like three secret ish dungeons that you have to like go through before accessing the Tomb of the Heretic. This is the one that drops you the second Seal of Morganath. So you will find this boss in the Corbin Sands Rift, like you will go down here and then to the left, right? And we're using this one to convert the Wit to Pierce Damage of Phantasma Blades and also to give you cooldown reduction towards Phantasma Blades. This is especially important on this one because we're actually not spamming Phantasma Blades, but like just using this at a nuke. And if you want to not spam this, obviously cooldown reduction is insanely good. So this one has percent global CDR as well as flat CDR towards Phantasma Blades. Also plus one to Night Blade and plus three to Deadly Aim and the Code and Chaos of Curse conversion does make this offhand like insanely good for this build. For gloves we have Quick Draw Gloves, well because Ranger Expertise and Phantasma Blades we're actually using both of that. And also like the Legendary Pierce Gloves are like not good in this game right now. Mythical Windshear Greaves are pretty decent as well. 4% armor on the roll from the smith as well as 3% fizz dress, some poison and trap and dress. But like the main reason why you use this is because of Windshear, right? 20% chance when hit. You have another 6% dodge for 5 seconds, which is actually insane. Like this is also making this build insanely tanky. Like we are already a night blade and have like the ill devotion so we are already like setting at 22% dodge and deflect and this would add like another 60% dodge so we're gonna like be at 82% dodge during the proc right. For the metal I'm using Dire Buff Crust. I mean I'm obviously not interested in like dual wielding melee weapons, however Pierce metals kinda suck, <laughs> except for this one, so yeah this is the one that we're using here. For the insane away and like plus 2-2 two, two deadly aim, as well as like flat pierce and like resistances, like it's, it's so good right, like you cannot not use this actually. Mythical pack of treacherous means, I mean this is a ranged passive bonus right, gives you like more pierce damage, armor piercing percent which you actually don't need. And also like percent armor, right? Also like plus four to energy expertise and plus three to shadow dance is insane. As well as attack speed, as well as acid and elemental to pierce conversion. Like this belt has all that you need and that's where you use it. For the pants, I'm currently using Mage Guard Leggings for the Inquisitor Seal and Arcane Empowerment bonuses as well as plus three to elemental awakening. However, the build does have currently 0% disruption resistance as you can see. So something like Mythical Arcane Harmony Leggings could be like a very very good alternative to this one. For the rings, I'm using Blade Twister Signet. Like one of these is definitely a must have. You can even like use two of them to like have full elemental to pierce conversion. You definitely want one of them though for the Mark of the Blade. That gives you like additional pierce resistance shred. For the other ring, I'm currently using Ring of Orissa for the flat pierce and like percent pierce and also like for the eye of Orissa as well as some attack speed. I mean, obviously this is super super hard to get and I don't like recommend you like going for this one and I, I cannot expect you to have this ring either. If you don't have this ring just like try two blade twister signets or just use like any green ring that like fixes your resistances that's like also totally fine or it's like maybe that has HP on top like maybe Golos ring or like living ring right to like boost up your kind of squishy HP here a little bit. However, this is like really cool and the Eye of Orissa is like a really cool eye that like circles around you. I kind of like these, but yeah, they're like ridiculously hard to get. And last but not least, for the Relic, we're using the Serenity. I mean, no surprise here, just do a exclamation mark Serenity, right? Just craft this one. We got Physique, Cunning and Spirit as a completion bonus, which is not the worst actually. You can get like different completion bonuses on this one. Um, like the 4% DA one I think is like the best one that you can get. However, I mean, this is totally fine. Like, don't try to, like, craft more for, like, just completion bonuses unless you have, like, an insane amount of hours and mats into this game already, anyway. But yeah, why Serenity? I mean, Serenity gives me that safety of a circuit breaker that the spell doesn't have otherwise. So, yeah, I really like it. And also for my teleport rune, I'm using the rune of Nadan's Strike. Nadan's Strike is a teleport. And yeah, it has like some additional pierce and physical damage on it, which also gets converted to pierce damage actually due to the 100% armor piercing on the weapon. 
and due to the skull having main hand damage as well. So yeah, this is actually a like pure pierce, crit damage, teleport, which like did some damage, and that's actually not too bad. It's actually like decent damage on the spot. One last thing, you can see that I'm using Baroness Fury here as a default attack replacer, as a filler actually. This one is from the Shadow of Baroness component that you can find in the Ancient Grove for example, or as a random drop. And yeah, just craft this one and use it on your offhand for example, and then you can use the Shadow of Baroness like default attack replacer as a filler to like gain some additional damage on your like default attacks and you have to use default attacks anyways to like proc soul spread so why not use this one as well right the elemental damage on this one gets like almost fully converted to pierce so it's some pretty decent damage here also for attributes you want to put as many points into physique and spirit just so you can barely wear your armor pieces as well as your offhand for the armor it is 666 for the chest and for the offhand it is actually 652 because of the Dryad Devotion. If you don't have the Dryad Devotion and its Spirit Reduction, then this offhand would need 724 Spirit Points. All the remaining Attribute Points should be put into Cunning in my opinion, because the build already has like very nice DA, as you can see from like skills and like other gear pieces. So you kind of like want to scale your way higher with Cunning, and also Cunning does increase your Pierce damage by 451% here, 1100 Cunning. So you basically have this number added on top of your like Sheet Pierce damage over here, so you have 2358 plus 450, so we are basically at plus 2800 pierce damage modifier. For leveling, you can check out the pierce parts of my how to level a Nightblade guide on YouTube, as well as the speed leveling videos of this character. However, I did level this character with cold damage, like cold damage dual wield melee, and you should, if you want to play this build in the end game, rather play as a pierce build even while leveling so that you already like level your pierce devotions while leveling. Now let me also show you like a real quick uh, dummy kill time here and then we can check out the build in some other action here. So yeah, we have around 24 second dummy kill time, even though I like kind of fucked up, right? <laughs> I uh, forgot to use my shadows in between and like tell them to attack, right? So yeah, actually the damage is pretty good against dummy obviously because you can like trap the dummy and you will like permanent crit the dummy. Um, against some nemesis or like some bosses that can't be trapped that easily, you're still gonna like trap them because of run time set but only like for a very short duration. So damage is not gonna be quite as good against those kind of bosses. But overall, I think the build really has actually fine damage, and it's certainly playable. Like, I thought it's gonna be a meme build, but it's actually like a proper build. It's just a little squishy maybe on the HP side of things, but actually it's not really squishy because of like all the <laughs> debuffs and seal and fizzerness that you have. It's actually okay, and also armor isn't too bad. Like, I think overall this is actually a legit build. This is not even a meme build. It's a guy if you're already here all the time. You can't fool me. How do you fare against this guy? Just, uh, just kill him, right? Lol. Seems good. But I hope you didn't use the scuffed one, right? Like, the scuffed one was, uh... Like, no song is kind of lame, right? I'm still taking, like, no damage for that, like... One of Gander is, like, not bad, right? Let's see if we die to this guy. We can't... Can we trap him? No, we can't run. Okay, let's take our distance down here. Social distance from uh, Gargoyle, right? Very important, guys, very important. Okay, not too bad. Oh, we killed Busty before he did the 
the aura thing, right? That's pretty good, actually. And we can cut this guy from afar so he doesn't even do it. Yeah, that's pretty nice for like getting mandras, actually, this well. Pretty good, pretty good. Highest DPS build in the game, and it's like lower DPS than like 90% of my builds. <laughs> Uh, let's get this scary here, right? Trying to face tank these two at the same time. Should like go to the other side, right? Like this. So that if my Phantasma Blades like pierce through, they hit both of them, right? But actually, like, I don't take damage, like, the horn is such a good debuff, it's actually insane. Like, he was grinding in zombie mode. But maybe I've watched the wrong streams, if I'm... ass. What was that damage there? Like the one hit took me for like 6k, right? Everything else is easy mode. Okay. I mean, it's an okay Bogonov killer, nevertheless. Right? Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you're gonna enjoy playing this Ram Tank Infiltrator as well and getting some good loot with it. I also wanna thank all my supporters on Patreon as well as on Twitch for supporting me and making these kind of guides possible for me to do. And I hope to see you around on my next video or on my next Twitch livestream. Take care everybody and I'll see you around.